Hey, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehudo Ben Shomer, and welcome to The Weekly Way, your weekly commentary on the Torah, Half Torah, and Brit Hadesha portions. Today we are in Parashah number 10, Torah portion number 10, which is Mechetz, which means at the end, and our Torah portion comes from Bereshit, Genesis chapter 41, goes all the way to chapter 44, verse 17. So in Parashah Mechetz, uh, the Pharaoh has two dreams in which uh, the interpretation of both those dreams is really one and the same. The first dream is where seven healthy cows cannibalize seven sickly cows. And the second dream, we see uh, that Pharaoh uh, sees seven uh, full ears of wheat uh, or corn, depending on the translation that you're reading from and using, and the, the healthy, robust uh, ears of wheat slash corn cannibalize the seven, you know, sickly, dry, withered. Uh, so the meaning of both these dreams are one and the same, and they the dreams were doubled to to uh, warn Pharaoh and let Pharaoh know that this is definitely going to happen, uh, that it's urgent and it's going to happen soon. So it means that there's going to be seven years of plenty in the land of Egypt and seven years of famine that will follow, and the famine will be so harsh that the seven plenteous years will be easily forgotten. They, people won't even remember how plenteous it was because the famine will be so severe. So uh, the two dreams are like two confirming witnesses and follows Torah protocol because the Torah says by one or uh, two witness or by two or three witnesses, let everything be established, correct? So Joseph is summoned and interprets the dreams for Pharaoh and is taken basically from rags to riches, from prison to the palace, uh, we should say, and is appointed second in command of Egypt and is, ch is in charge of stockpiling all the foodstuffs in preparation for this seven years of famine which is coming. So once the famine hits, um, Israel, otherwise known as Jacob, sends his son minus the youngest Benjamin because he lost Joseph. He's afraid of uh, losing Benjamin, which was of the same woman, which was of Rachel, which was his favorite wife. Therefore, those were his favorite sons. So all of the sons besides Benjamin go down to Egypt to buy food uh, and bring it back uh, to the family to support the household. But of course they run into Joseph, but they don't recognize Joseph because he looks, talks, dresses just like an Egyptian. So they think that, you know, he's just the second in command of Egypt. They have no idea that this is their long lost brother that they left for dead, thought was dead. They don't know it's Joseph. So just like Yeshua today, He's been clothed in pagan Christian apparel, a Greek Romanesque style, and he's unrecognizable to his Jewish brethren, just like Joseph was dressed like an Egyptian and unrecognizable to his brothers. Um, and so uh, this is just but one of many reasons why Jews do not accept Jesus or Yeshua as the Messiah, because he's often portrayed and painted uh, and described as uh, you know a Hellenist, as as Romanesque or Greekesque, uh, we should say. So yet um, Joseph immediately recognizes his brothers, even though they don't recognize him. Uh, so his brothers bow down to him because he's second in command of Egypt. Therefore, fulfilling Joseph's teenage prophetic dream of the sheaves bowing down to his sheaves. Um, and uh, Joseph accuses them of being spies and makes them the, divulge the welfare of, uh, of their father and youngest brother, which is his full blood brother, Benjamin, to prove that they're not spies. He gets uh, Simon, or Shimon, uh, he's imprisoned while the rest of them return home with the food to provide food for their family and relieve them from the famine. So um, uh, they were not to return again until they brought their youngest brother with them to prove that they weren't spies, right? So reluctantly, uh, the, the, the food runs out, and reluctantly, uh, Israel slash Jacob uh, says, okay, you know, I'm going to have to send Benjamin if we're going to live, we're going to survive. I don't want to do it, but we've got to. Uh, Judah vows, uh, vows for his safety, uh, vouches for uh, Benjamin's safety. So Israel slash Jacob permits Benjamin to return with the others to get food. And when they arrive, Joseph's emotions and seeing his, his younger brother, his full brother, overwhelms him, and uh, he goes away and has a good cry. He shows favor to Benjamin uh, when they all eat together by giving him, you know, uh, many, many times more than he gave the rest of his brothers of gifts and food and clothes and things like this. So uh, Shimon, Simon, is released, 
and or Simeon, however you want to pronounce his name, he's released and they're given the food and they're sent away. But Joseph hides his drinking goblet in his brother's bag, Benjamin's saddle bag, and then sends the guards to apprehend them, claiming that uh, Benjamin stole the, or one of the brothers stole his goblet that he used for divination or divining. Uh, so they bring, uh, they, they all reluctantly go back to Egypt and, um, you know, they find out uh, which cup the bag is in. It ends up being Benjamin. So everybody thinks that Benjamin is, is either going to die or is be going to become uh, the second in command of Egypt uh, slave for forever. Therefore, Jacob, Israel, would have lost another son of his favorite wife. So that's where we end the Torah portion, and we move right into the half Torah portion, which, which is taken from 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 15, all the way to chapter 4, verse 1. So 1 Kings 3, 15, it says, And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem, and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offering, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. So here, King Solomon shows uh, God thanks and gratitude for the answer to prayer, which he received, namely the gift of wisdom and celebrates and gets others to celebrate and praise God for all of his goodness. Uh, for we see in this verse that we just read, um, or the verses to follow, that uh, he'll need all the wisdom uh, that God gave him uh, because God, uh, Solomon has big shoes to fill and he brings Israel into its golden age uh, dynasty of, of kingdom rule. So 1 Kings 3.16, it says, Then there came two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. Now, personally, I don't believe these women were harlots. That's my personal opinion, because the word for harlot in the Old Testament and the Hebrew could also mean innkeeper. So because, uh, you know, if, if they were proven harlots, according to the Torah, they would have been condemned to death. Solomon would have never even heard their argument because they were harlots, and because they were harlots and proven harlots, uh, according to the Torah, they were to be executed. So I don't think that they were harlots. I think that they were innkeepers. And uh, they ran a business together while their husbands were abroad on business. So uh, this is clearly who I believe these women are, uh, just as I believe that Rahab was not necessarily a harlot, but also an innkeeper uh, who kept the spies. So why would the spies go to a whorehouse to hide out? Uh, that doesn't give me very good feelings about the spies that were sent out uh, by Joshua. <laughs> You know, it makes me feel a lot better that they went to an inn, which makes more sense because the inn or the tavern, that was where all the information passed through. Travelers came through so they, they, so they could spy out the land without being uh, noticed and it not being obvious. They can blend in with the other travelers at the inn. This leads us into our Brit Resha, our Renewed Covenant, our New Testament portion, which is taken from Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it says... And it shall come to pass that in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So the whole uh, the, the, the whole theme of this uh, parashat uh, this week is about dreams. So I can testify personally how God has spoken to me and to, the, and, and to people through me uh, via dreams. Granted, he doesn't communicate to everyone in this way. He speaks to us universally through his word, but he speaks to us as individuals, too, in a unique way in regards to our personal relationship with him. So God doesn't always communicate on a personal level with everybody in the exact same way. Uh, he, he communicates a lot with me through dreams as well as his word. He may not he may or may not communicate with you via dreams, but I believe that dreams are very important, and it's important that we, you know, recognize if they're just uh, the run-of-the-mill crazy dream of your mind working things out, or if it's a, you know, a, a pizza dream. In other words, you, you, you know, you, you heard people, you know, eating before bedtime and having crazy dreams, or if it's a God-given prophetic dream. Uh, I've had so many of them, and I've worked through so many of them. I can. I can t pretty much tell the difference now, which is just a regular crazy dream and which is a prophetic dream. Uh, so he spoke to the patriarchs, um, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He spoke to, you know, uh, Solomon, and, and he spoke to a lot of bi biblical personages through dreams. He spoke to the kings in dreams and, th and to the prophets in dreams. And it says in the last days that he will again speak to people in dreams, and this is coming to pass. So more times than not, the dreams we have have a twofold 
interpretation. One, for you, the dreamer, th that's the first interpretation. The second interpretation is for the body of Messiah. So you have an individual interpretation for you personally and a, an interpretation that applies to the body of Messiah at large. Uh, elements and princi principles in regards to dream uh, will always be found in the Torah. This is how you will know if the, if your dream is from God or from the evil one, or if it's just a run-of-the-mill regular dream. Because God can also give you dreams, but also the evil one, Satan and his cohorts, can influence and and, and invade your dream, uh, in, invade the dream world, and and uh, uh, attack you even in your dreams. And that has happened to me as well. They've even tried to give false prophetic messages to me in the dreams, and it just never felt right or set right. It was a little warpy and a little sicky sweet, and I could easily discern that it wasn't from God but from, from the enemy. Uh, so take your dream to a, a mature, trusted elder who, who you know will believe you and has the Spirit of God within them. For many times, God will keep the meaning of the dream from you and, uh, um, and consult, according to the Torah, two or more elders in the interpretation of the dream and hash it out. So uh, sometimes he'll keep it from you to cause you to search out his word and search out mature uh, uh, elders and believers to be able to find the interpretation of the dream. Other times, as soon as you wake up, sometimes you'll immediately know what the interpretation of the dream is. In Joseph's case, the dreams that Pharaoh had that he interpreted for Pharaoh were, war were a, a warning. Um, as in Solomon's case, it was an encouraging, edifying dream to Solomon that he was the anointed ruler and leader of Israel and uh, that God was going to bless his, his reign as long as he uh, stuck to the words of Torah. Um, it was after the dream that God bestowed wisdom upon Solomon, and he was able to render a wise verdict in the case of the two women who claimed that the one living baby was theirs, as we read in our uh, half Torah portion. So again, the, the, the uh, Brit Chadesha portion is about, in the last days, it says Acts 2.17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Guys, have a great Sabbath. Hope you enjoyed the Torah portion uh, this week. Shabbat Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Have a great day. Abrahamsdescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.